In the bluegrass state, this blue logo stands for a lot. It stands for good products, a good lifestyle, and a good piece of Kentuckiana history. It stands for Ford. Ford, it, it winds itself into American history. It, it's, it's a company that has been here. It's always been here. It will always be here. That, that's what people believe. Since the early 1900s, when Henry Ford set up a sub-assembly plant at 3rd and Breckenridge, Kentuckiana workers have taken pride in building Ford products. From the Tin Lizzie to the Explorer, Fords built in Louisville have always sold well. It's a very important uh, part of Ford Motor Company, very high quality. Customers like our product. With 7,000 Kentuckiana workers, Ford pumps billions of dollars into the local economy through its payroll, through taxes, and through spin-off industries. We moved here to supply them. We want to be close enough to them to be able to supply them basically every hour with a shipment. Ford has also meant stability for generations of Kentuckiana families. I've always felt uh, obligated to Ford. What is the driving force behind Ford? This week, in exclusive interviews, we'll hear from Ford's top executives in Detroit and Louisville, from the folks who sell Fords, from the folks who use Ford to sell other companies on Kentuckiana. And we'll hear from the men and women on the line who put their strength and sweat into building the trucks and the tradition that comes with this blue logo. <laughs> They work fast, they work hard, they work on America's best-selling trucks, they work at Ford. 7,000 strong Kentuckiana Ford workers run two of the most profitable plants in the Ford family. They enjoy the best tools modern technology can offer, the best blue-collar paychecks in the area, and they enjoy a long tradition. It began almost a century ago with a man they seldom think about today. Born in 1863 to Irish immigrants, Henry Ford grew up hungry for more than a life as a Midwestern farmer. He was much more interested in mechanical things. And uh, for instance, when he was given a watch for his 13th birthday, he immediately took it apart. With only an eighth grade education, Ford left his family homestead in Dearborn, Michigan to take a job with a fledgling electric company called Detroit Edison. By now, the automobile had been invented and Ford started tinkering with his own version. And in 1896, Ford gave up a good job to stake his fame and fortune on this horseless carriage. His first two companies sputtered and died. But in 1903, on borrowed money, Ford founded the Ford Motor Company. He wouldn't fail again. One of his real talents was the ability to recognize good people and get them to work for him. And that, was, that was one of the keys to his initial success. And success came quickly for Henry Ford. He opened a factory on Mack Avenue in Detroit. This replica stands in the historic Greenfield Village in Dearborn today. In 1908, Ford introduced the Model T, or Tin Lizzie, as it's affectionately called. In basic black, it became the standard American automobile. As the business developed, he became uh, more and more uh, ruthless, and he was, he was willing to do the things that would uh, push the company along. That included pushing his workers. In 1914, Ford introduced the assembly line concept at his Detroit plant. It cut production time on Model Ts from 12 hours to 93 minutes. He also hired hundreds of unskilled workers, giving them $5 a day, twice the going wage rate. Thousands of farm boys came to the big city to build cars for Ford. That was the first time in, in industrial history that you could get a high-wage job with very little skill. What that helped to create is, is the enormous blue-collar middle class. There was nothing industrial about Ford's private life. His estate, Fairlane Manor, shows what an introvert he was. The mansion's hidden by a man-made woods. Besides his wife Clara and son Edsel, Ford had few close friends. 
His real passion was nature. He lived in a modern day castle, but Henry Ford always considered himself a common man. He was both a pragmatist and a visionary, and he used his wealth and position to further his vision of America, a place where technology and nature thrive together, a place where entrepreneurs grew both companies and communities. And here's the community Ford grew. He collected homes from the 1800s, even his family farmhouse, and rebuilt them here in his own Greenfield Village in Dearborn. What he did, especially in the village here, is to a large extent recreate the 19th century America that he was partially responsible for destroying. But Ford's love of history wouldn't overshadow his hunger for success. His empire would soon grow beyond the Detroit area. And by the mid-1900s, Henry Ford set his sights on a city by the Ohio River. And Louisville, Kentucky would become a new piston in Ford's driving force.